Bob Wood, National Program Director of the Chum Group, worked with us in producing... Guess who's coming? It's Guess who's coming? It's Guess who's coming? Dan Calvin. Back again. Who is he? Just your favorite DJ Savior. Using, 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 and confusing beats that you never heard. Put a smile on your face like old to right. You're just fessing, man. I don't even want to hear about it. You're and just you're listening fessing. to Make and Break Radio on RadioMacNaw.org. All right, everybody, thank you for listening to RadioMackinac.org. I am your host, Daniel Calvin. Uh, this is Make and Break Radio. Uh, it's Friday o'clock on, uh, uh, I don't know, what is it, uh, April 13th uh, p.m., something like that. Yeah, that sounds about right. And uh, I've got some great new CDs that I bought in Chapel Hill while I was in North Carolina. Uh, got some interesting stories about how I got to North Carolina and possibly that will be some kind of lame excuse for why I was not around last weekend and quite frankly the weekend before I wasn't around because I was under the impression that it was the last weekend for trivia at the Village Inn on Mackinac Island uh, on a Friday night but uh, for some reason I was going home tonight and I had people bellowing at me hey you going down for trivia and Ah, that got me all confused. I don't know what's going on tonight. But nonetheless, I'm playing some music. I've got some stories to share. And so, uh, let's get this thing going. So I skipped two shows. Without notifying anyone. No word to my loyal listeners. I did, however, have great reasons to do so. The first absence was due to a seasonal shift in behavior. It was the last night for trivia at Cawthorn's Village Inn, and not only did I kind of want a Friday off, but I have found that pre-producing a show in a pinch and rushing back downtown with a with the mobile make-and-break radio studio for an on-location broadcast can be problematic. The second absence was caused by an out-of-state familial new... new uh, excuse me. A uh, out-of-state familial nuptial event. Tonight I will share with you some of my thoughts and experiences on that trip. Keep in mind that uh, I'm reading a note that I have written in the margin of this page. That that stutter that I had when I read earlier uh, actually was caused by uh, I had forgotten that I wrote that while I was taking off from Chippewa County Airport, and uh, I found it terribly amusing to make a note of that, which is really funny in the sense that. Uh, I did, in fact, stutter and jam that all up. So let's set the stage. Let's pretend. We're flying to North Carolina. Raleigh-Durham Airport from Chippewa County. Let's see where this takes us. Welcome back to Make and Break Radio. I'm your host, Daniel Calvin. Tonight, along with face-melting rock and roll, I have a few thoughts and experiences I'd like to share with you about early spring travel to Chapel Hill, North Carolina, from a Mackinac Islander's perspective. I haven't flown anywhere other than off of the island in seven years. But when I did, I always made my way to Pelston, Michigan, for the turboprop flight to Detroit. This time, inspired by price and circumstance, I chose to fly out of Chippewa County Airport in Kinchlow, Michigan, just south of the Sioux. The runways used to handle... These runways used to handle the nuke-equipped B-52s back during the Cold War. Uh, sorry for that stutter. Once again, I was uh, writing from back in the day, and I was still taking off, or I possibly was landing. Never mind. All of this is out of context. 
Whatever, let's get back to the story. At first, I was disappointed to see that today's aircraft was not a Saab turboprop like I was used to uh, dealing with. My apathy soon changed to delight when I realized my slightly longer but cheaper flight would actually be a half of an hour shorter than I was used to. I was geeked, but not nearly as much as these guys. Here's, they might be giants, dig my grave. As I've said before, I want to remind everybody that uh, you want to take a look at uh, the Chairman of Awesome's Twitter feed. He's a friend of the show, and uh, he's at uh, uh, or, uh, on Twitter at uh, the Chairman. Uh, what you need to be looking at right now is a uh, hashtag of interest. Hashtag old man at Coachella. He's at Coachella right now. He's uh, been threatened by security for grabbing at Mike Watts' beard. And I'm told that he is a, about to uh, harass the Black Keys. So, uh, you know, between uh, the fire hose and the Black Keys could be a good time. Uh, nonetheless, check it out. Uh, chairman of Awesome, that's the chairman, hashtag old man at Coachella. When I fly around, I don't necessarily have a preference for an aisle seat over a window seat. But when I am sitting in either, I like to take full advantage. But look out if I have an aisle seat. I'm getting up to, uh, say, look for my brother, or uh, uh, oftentimes I'll, I'll uh, use the toilet 11 times, each time only to see the blue toilet water swirl around in that amusing vacuum uh, commode thing that they have going on there. Other times, I've, quote, moved freely around the cabin in order to interview as many other travelers as possible about their comings and goings. Because of the black suit and dark glasses that I frequently wear, this is productive for my endeavors, but occasionally it upsets the flight crew. I have had this conversation more than once. And this is how it always goes. Sir, we're sorry. No one told us you'd be on board. Well, I've known for months. What's wrong with this operation? Sir, we, uh, uh, again, we apologize, um, but, uh, once your task is complete, we would be honored to upgrade you to, to uh, uh, first class. Fine by me, I always say, and the conversation with the old bag in 11C is over. On the other hand, when I sit in a window seat, I like to take full, uh, full advantage of that situation as well. Oh, how I like to gop out the window, looking at nothing in particular as if there were uh, naked dancing titty girls gyrating around on the wing, uh, thus making a perfect uh, explanation for the recent turbulence. If only that's how it actually worked. I like to look at the ground and, and try to guess, judging by unidentifiable landmarks, what our current position is. Many times I've wondered, Maybe I'll see my house, or at least my town from 30,000 feet. This activity has always been a failure until last Thursday. We flew over the eastern entrance to the Straits of Mackinac about halfway up on our way skyward to 25,000 feet. I looked out and as I saw little St. Martin's Island, big St. Martin's Island, the Mackinac Bridge, and, and there it was, Mackinac Island. We were just low enough that while I never saw my roof of my house, I did see the collective roofs of my, uh, my block and the red roofs of White Deer Trail. As I enjoyed seeing Mackinac City, Pelston, Petoskey, and Harbor Springs, all in one big gulp, it struck me how small the upper lower how, how small Upper Lower Michigan looks from that height. While I was able to see as well as uh, flew farther south and whatever I just wrote there said something about your mom and, and that joke no longer makes any sense. Anyway, by the time my can of Sprite was finished, I was on approach to Detroit. 
This episode of Make and Break Radio is brought to you by Spinstermacher Schnapps, a drink served so cold it will make even the hottest dame just homely enough to be approachable even by a guy like you. Try Spinstermacher Schnapps. Don't lower your standards on a Saturday night, just make them colder. In the economy class of rental cars, I had a choice between a Ford Focus or a Bug. I chose the Bug. I won't use this forum to rail on about this little car's idiosyncrasies, such as its uh, uh, near 100% rear blind spot, a steering wheel slash dash viewing a- angle that uh, designed for either somebody 11, uh, uh, four foot 11 or seven foot two, and no one in between, or even the uh, vacuum breaking self opening windows. No, it's the key. It more closely resembles a switchblade or a pocket flashlight more than it mimics any car key I've ever used. Too much pocket bulk. But Enterprise really knows how to kick you in the junk. That's who I rented the car from. Fastened to my car key on a permanently crimped ring was the spare key. Added bonus to this dichotomy was a tag that clearly states that my key replacement costs would start at $225 for one key. So it stands to reason that if you lose your key, well, you lost both, so... eh, You get the picture. When I rented out the bug, I opted to rent the Garmin GPS as well. I don't know my way around Raleigh, uh, the uh, Raleigh area at all, and I, I came well equipped, uh, very well equipped, without bringing a map or even memorizing the direction gi- uh, directions given to me. I've never used a GPS made after 1994 before at all, so I opted to transfer one adventure of clueless rainy night driving for one that involves a touchscreen glaring at me from the dashboard of a car that I've never driven before. I typed I, I, I typed into the address, and the uh, contraption loaded up the maps required to reach my destination. I heard a familiar voice tell me to turn right on uh, Florgen Trap Road. I knew that voice. It was Siri of iPhone fame. Boy, that lady really knows how to get out there and get those vo- get voice acting gigs. So anyway, I turned right, and, and that's when I heard my first... Recalculating. I didn't know what was happening. I followed the new purple line on the map. Turn left, she said. I was in the right lane. Recalculating. I blew that. Th- I, I blew through that inter- intersection and found myself back at the airport, cursing up a storm about the possibility of having to pay for parking just to get back to the place that I didn't intend to be in the first place. Turn right on Route 40 West. Well, I got it that time, and so I drove. I realized that it might not be such a bad idea to stop along the way and buy a lighter. That might take the edge off of the uh, intermittent rain. Siri disagreed with my decision. She and I battled with routes for the next 20 minutes until I determined that she was leading me into creating a two-dimensional cartographic bowl of spaghetti just out of spite. I cursed at my windshield, and I swear at some point I heard Siri call me a dumbass. Siri just might have been cranky from being awakened from her tiny duffel bag slumber because the next day she led me to a used record shop at a UNC art museum that I enjoyed immensely, and so that's why I think that it might have just been that one evening. I can't say that all is forgiven, but she is trying to redeem herself, especially with that music store uh, uh, delivery, and uh, you have heard the uh, results of that so far this evening at least a couple of times. And sometimes we all need redemption. Even satellite-powered map gizmos. And, uh, you know what? It's getting pretty late in the show, and so I guess that uh, this will be... This has been your version of uh, Straight Talk Straights. 
I've been your host, Daniel Calvin, and, uh, well, at least for this, I have been. And for the next few, uh, maybe for the next hour, I will continue to be. So let's get on with the show. I had some interesting events occur to me and around me on my flight from Detroit to Raleigh. I'd have to say it started with hearing that airport announcement that airport announcement that hasn't changed in more than 10 years. You know, the one that reminds you not to leave your bags unattended. It was that second part of the recording that rang true that day. About 10 minutes after being told to be aware of strangers asking me to handle foreign objects, I was asked to uh, do that very thing. I was looking for the TV to find uh, uh, where my uh, gate, my uh, connecting flight was uh, leaving from. And a man with a didgeridoo approached me and asked me if I would hold on to his object while uh, he used the nearby restroom. Well, you see, as far as uh, foreign objects are concerned, a didgeridoo is a model for this description. Hell, it's, a, it's so foreign of an object that it barely comes from this planet. It would still be, it still wouldn't be a planet or part of this planet. If Australia hadn't been voted in as a continent in the Continental Ratification Congress of 1817, you didn't look that you don't you didn't know anything about that, did you? Well, look it up on Wikipedia. It's true. Back in those days, Australia was considered an annex of the moon. But I digress. I wasn't comfortable with this situation to begin with, and as the seconds wore on, I determined that I should do as told. And since I saw something that I would say something. Janet Mata Napolitano has told me as such, and that's what she wants me to do, and since she's from the government, that's what I will do. Just then, a TSA agent strolled by, burrito in hand. I informed him of the situation, and I was instructed to stand just around the corner by the a martini bar and point out the man as he emerged from the toilet. Moments later, the man in question exited the restroom, only to find a TSA agent holding the foreign object while staring sternly at the stranger. I was far enough away that through the din of the crowd I was unable to hear the conversation, but I was able to observe from around the corner, just behind Slapshot's martini bar. What came next can best be described as interesting. The two men gestured and gesticulated seemingly at random for a moment, until the strange man's motions became more frantic. A situation changed drastically when the man attempted to grab his didgeridoo and walk away. The security agent seemingly disagreed with this decision and loudly proclaimed his displeasure. Stop, sir, or I will take further action. The strange man did not stop. The wires flew. The pulsing shock snapped through the air. I wandered off at that point as my flight was about to board after all, and I don't know whatever became of this stranger and his foreign object. I must thank the TSA and Homeland Security for prote protecting my ability to have a good time. Let's get on with some music. Well, so far as, a, as, as I can tell, I have one listener. Not too much of a surprise. I'm not that entertaining. But nonetheless, I enjoy what I do, and the music that I play, I enjoy. Uh, and if you are listening, that's awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate every second that you could, you can give me. Uh, continuing on with my uh, travel uh, story from the, that I've been rambling on about uh, throughout the evening is uh, uh, a few minutes after that uh, moment with the the tasering of the the stranger with the foreign object. Uh, I found myself on my flight from Detroit to Raleigh, sitting in the middle seat, contemplating the previous night's dinner. When the uh, attendant uh, walked by and, and was flagged down by a gentleman one row uh, ahead of me in the aisle seat. This man's sartorial tastes made an uh, unidentifiable statement that really grabbed my attention. He wore reading glasses ahead of his glasses, while a pair of sunglasses sat astride his head. This man has seen a lot, I thought to myself. My uh, ophthalmological uh, uh, curiosity was broken when I heard him begin to explain why he needed the flight, attend uh, the, the, uh, flight attendant's attention. 
It was about five o'clock, and he was inquiring about what meals would be served on this flight. None, the attendant responded. This flight is only an hour and four minutes long. That is not enough time to serve 20, uh, 248 uh, people dinner. With the most pathetic slouch, the man sighed. Oh. Uh, taking note of all of this, uh, this uh, all-seeing man's dejection, the attendant noted, I have some peanuts. Would you like some peanuts? The man accepted two bags of the legumes with an enthusiasm smile usually reserved for uh, children being offered a second serving of uh, ice cream or possibly asparagus. The rest of the flight went by without much anything happening, worth noting, while flight uh, 2365 uh, had an immense amount of uh, snakes aboard. Coincidentally, there were also dozens of freely roaming tame badgers that apparently hadn't eaten in days. I went to North Carolina, and all I got was two cartons of camels. So I just uh, I just finished up uh, huffing up some paint fumes. I have uh, actually uh, spray paint for uh, refinishing the bottoms of my car doors that are uh, starting to show their age. Uh, yeah, 11 years will do that to a, uh, machine. Nonetheless, I'm enjoying life. Maybe I'll drive down to Petoskey tomorrow and, uh, check out buying televisions. I don't know. Nonetheless, I hope you have a great evening. Thank you very much for listening. I've had a great time tonight. I had a great time listening to the music. Uh, well, of course, I'm the one that chose it. If I didn't, how foolish would that have been? Uh, and, uh, thank you for listening to my anecdotes and stories from my adventure to North Carolina last weekend, and I, I apologize for my, uh, uh, not airing a show without any notice, uh, the week before, but that is my excuse, and that's what I'm sticking to, and quite frankly, uh, If you think so, if you think it's so easy, why don't you try and do it? Every week, nine o'clock to eleven p.m. Friday night, RadioMacNaught.org, Make and Break Radio. I'm your host, Daniel Calvin. I love every minute minute of it. I love every listener I have. Thank you very much for listening. Like I said, I might sound facetious, but genuinely and truly this is an awesome thing i love doing it and uh that's all i got one more song see you next week sometimes on a friday night between 9 and 11 p.m i turn on my television and through my roku device i use the live 365 app And I listen to Make and Break Radio through my stereo. It's kind of like a weird rabbit hole because some of the stuff that I've heard, I swear I had just said earlier, maybe even just seconds before, but then I put that out of my mind. because I know it's the internet and the internet is weird and is full of cats that wear limes for hats and that's how I stay sane <laughs>